Today we're going to talk about factorials. We introduced this uh, yesterday because it's a natural time to come up, a natural thing to come up with. We're talking about the ratio test because the ratio test is very good at analyzing series with factorial factors. Let's take a look at what factorials are and why the ratio test likes them so much. So we defined n factorial, that n factorial, which we will denote as n followed by an exclamation point, as the number of arrangements of n objects. So yesterday, uh, we saw that zero factorial must be equal to one, because if you have zero objects, there is only one way to arrange them, the empty arrangement. Then one factorial is one, two factorial is two, then once we had those two arrangements, each of those two arrangements had three places we could put a third object. So we take each of those two and multiply by three. And then we take each of those six and multiply by four. So we found out that we just take, to find n factorial, we just take the number of arrangements we had with one less and multiply by the number, uh, the total number of, of items. This requires us this recursive definition, so n, uh, n factorial times n minus one factorial, means we have to start with zero factorial equals one. So that's like our seed in our recursive definition. We can also think of this as all the positive integer factors less than n, the products. So n times n minus one, times n minus two, all the way down to three times two times one. That's another way that we'll think of n factorial. You just make a product of all the integers less than, of uh, all the positive integers less than or equal to n. So let's take a look at an example. Uh, we care about factorials as they appear in series because we're doing the ratio test. So let's take a look at this example. We want to know that this series converges or diverges. We can see that the terms go to zero. But it's not important that the terms are going to zero. It's important how the terms are going to zero. Are these terms going to zero faster than the harmonic series? If so, then we'll get convergence. If not, then we'll get diverge. So since there are factorials, this looks like a job for the ratio test. All right. So the a n term will be one over n factorial. And the a n plus one term, I'm just going to replace the n with parentheses. And I'll have one pl uh, n plus one, then factorial. Add one to the n first. That'd be like the first thing in the book.
So we'll take the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus one times one over a n. Multiply by the reciprocal to save a vertical space. So we'll multiply by n factorial over one. So here's the limit from the ratio test. We're going to simplify this to see what's going on. Right now, we're going to see why the ratio test loves factorials so much. Our strategy for simplifying this is going to be write the larger factorial until you get to the smaller factorial. So I'm going to take this n plus 1 factorial. I'm going to start writing it n plus one times n times n minus one times n minus two. The next thing would be n factorial. I'm just using that recursive definition. The way I'm going to describe this is to say write the larger factorial until you get to the smaller factorial. Write the larger factorial until you get to the smaller factorial. Then cancel out the smaller factorial. Because we're multiplying things, we can cancel common factors. n factorial and n plus 1 factorial have n factors in common that will all cancel out. So we write the larger factorial until we get to the smaller factorial so we can cancel the smaller factorial. So now we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity. I'm going to drop the absolute value signs because my n's are all positive. And all we're left with is 1 over n plus 1. Something different happened here than when we had our polynomial or rational factor. Our rational factors always showed up at, uh, in the limit from the ratio test as an n, a power of n on top and that same power of n on the bottom, even with the same leading coefficients. So this is why the ratio test doesn't see polynomial factors or radical factors, because that limit, the limit of that part will always be equal to one. So here, factorials leave some n's behind. So here we have some n's left behind. We take the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n plus one, and this is e this equals zero. You always have to remember what test we're doing because a lot of our test for convergence work starts with limit as n goes to infinity. This is the limit from the ratio test. If the limit from the ratio test is less than one, The series is absolutely convergent. So, as far as the ratio test is concerned, we should look at the factorial factors and see the factorial factors leave ends behind in the limit for the from the ratio test. The factorial factors leave some ends behind.
factorial factors leave some ends behind in the ratio test. So the last couple examples, sorry, all of that together. The last few examples that we've looked at have shown us kind of this hierarchy in the ratio test of different kinds of factors. The ratio test ignores uh, polynomial and radical factors because the limit from the ratio test, since we have a n plus one over a n, would always result in one. So the ratio test does not care about polynomial or radical factors. They'll always just contribute a factor of one to the limit from the ratio test. Yesterday, we saw the example where we had an exponential factor, a two. So an exponential factor will leave the base behind. No ends behind, it leaves the base behind. So when there was a two to the n in the denominator, it left behind a one half. When there was a two to the n in the numerator, that left behind a two. And in the ratio test, that meant one was absolutely divergent, the other one was divergent. We see that with factorial factors, we're leaving ends behind. So if we leave, end up with ends in the denominator for our limit, we'll end up with zero, and zero is less than one. If we end up with an n in the numerator, then that limit will go to infinity, which is greater than one, and so the series would diverge. Any questions? So there's like this hierarchy. Factorials dominate over the exponentials, and the exponentials dominate over polynomials. Any questions? So the way we're thinking about it. We have this hierarchy, factorial over exponential over uh, polynomial or radical. And then we also have to think of numerator versus denominator. So this is a, an important thing for us to realize that factorial will dominate exponential, mostly because we tend to use exponential applied to growth and when we just mean fast growth. That, that's, that's not actually true. Something might just be growing very quickly. That does not mean something is growing exponentially. But if you just say, this quantity is growing fast, no one will care. But if you say this quantity is growing exponentially, you sound like a fancy man. And people say, oh, look at the fancy words. Exponentially, I don't know what that means, but it certainly sounds like it's gonna be fire. I mean, it's just, it's really annoying. Because if you just wanna say fast, say fast or quickly, but when you say something is growing exponentially, you are saying a specific mathematical thing. Something must be increasing by a percentage 
So if I think someone's trying to bullshit me with fancy math words to sound like a fancy man, I go, oh, what is the continuous rate of increase then? Good sir, who sounds so fancy. You said it's exponential. So what is the continuous rate of increase? I actually wouldn't do that because that's that just that just takes a jerk and throws another jerk into the mix. Uh, it's, they don't cancel each other out. Jerk plus jerk equals two jerk. It's additive. So at least there's that. Anyway, what are we talking about? So we kind of kind of get used to this idea that exponential is powerful. So Let's take a look at the ratio test. We have a factorial in the numerator and, a and an exponential in the denominator. We know that the n factorial, factorials tend to leave n's behind in the ratio test. Exponentials leave constants behind. So now we can see what's gonna happen in the ratio test. It's important to understand how the ratio test works so that you can look at stuff and not have to do the ratio test. And they say this diverges. Moreover, the terms don't even go to zero. So let's find out. Let's we'll take the ratio test. So a n is just n factorial over ten to the n. A n plus one is n plus one factorial over 10 to the n plus So we take a n plus one and a n and drop it into the ratio test. Then we need to simplify. We have that 10 to the n over a 10 to the n plus one. We saw that before. We saw this in the examples yesterday. We have a 10 to the n over a 10 to the n plus one. The 10 to the n cancels out, we the 10 to the one in the denominator. So that exponential with a base of 10 in the denominator left behind a 10 in the denominator. This did not have any n in it, so we were able to factor it out of the limit as n goes to infinity. For the factorials, we write the larger factorial until we get to the smaller factorial. And then we cancel the smaller factorial. So what's left behind is an n plus one. So the 10 to the n left behind a 10 in the denominator, but the n factorial left behind an n in the numerator. And so now as n goes to infinity, our limit goes to infinity. I just wrote infinity is greater than one. I might as well just put it equal instead of the limit goes.
ठीक है I have a question. Why am I so weirdly, randomly pedantic about certain things? Like I just wrote infinity is greater than one. I'm trying to make a point not to do that. But there it is. Any questions? Comments? So here's how we're going to deal with factorials um, in the ratio test. Here's what factorials represents, and here's factorials in the ratio test. So sometimes we'll um, sometimes we'll end up with factorial that has that starts off with two n. We want two n factorial as opposed to two n factorial. This is why English is a terrible language. Multiply by two first. The parentheses say multiply by two first, then do the factorial. If I wanted the factorial first, then the two, I would take the parentheses out. Does everybody see that difference? The difference between 2n with the factorial in parentheses, uh, 2n in parentheses factorial and 2n factorial. Do we see those as different? What order should the operations go? We're a little bit stuck, aren't we? Because PEMDAS just took a height. This is because PEMDAS, like motivation, is trash. PEMDAS is trash. Whereas factorials in PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I think I will, because it doesn't seem to be helpful in this scenario, does it? Also, sines and cosines. There's an important distinction between when we're multiplying by two before sign happens and when we're multiplying by two after. When we multiply by two before sign happens, we're making a period and cutting it in half because the x's are going twice as fast before they get to sign. But if the two is outside, we do the sign first and we just multiply the result by two. That's a vertical change. And yet we still be like all PEMDAS. Man, fuck PEMDAS. You know how you made the mistake where you have like x plus y squared, you said, I'll just square the x and square the y. That's because algebra was taught to you wrong. We did that to you. Because we showed you things like the distributive property and we taught you to, visual, just to visually mimic what we were doing instead of saying the symbols that we write down, they fucking mean something. And we can write different things, and it's a very precise language, which is part of the pain in the butt of learning it, but it's also what makes it work. Some of you will have a natural read on the difference between these two things, and some of you won't. I don't know what that stems from. It's not a defect in one or the other. Like if you drop me off anywhere in the United States, I'll probably be able to communi communicate with people, find out what's going on. If you drop me off in the middle of, let's say, I don't know, anywhere else in the world that doesn't speak English very much, and I would be bone. That's what happens. Some people are gonna have, some people are gonna have a natural different read on these two things. And someone else just might look at things differently. You know what I mean? Some people look at red cars and go, ooh, that's cool. And they don't realize how wrong they are. I bet they like chrome wheels too. Ugh, gross. You know what I'm talking about? Not you, Mazda. 
your red is the only red that should be allowed on cards. When I'm in charge, only Mazda gets to make red cards because their red paint is best red paint. So not you, Mazda. But like, if you got like fire engine red, I'm gonna get a fire engine red Camaro. So I'm not gonna let you buy a car, especially a fire engine red Camaro. You're just gonna wrap it around a tree. So no. Can I still have my red Mustang? No, I wanna protect people with cars and property. That's an old tired joke. I don't think anybody even thinks about it anymore. But then again, the, that's very recent compared to the subject I'm talking about, which is math, which is like thousands of years old. So talk about deal with the times, man. Anyway, what are we talking about? Some notes on factorials. We're gonna see a lot of factorials um, show up in expressions where we only have even powers. That doesn't mean when we write 2n factorial, we're just gonna pick the even ones. The first factor here is 2n, and then we count down by one. So 2n times 2n minus one, times 2n minus two, and so on. We still count down by one. This is an important thing to realize when we start running the ratio test. And we have some 2n factorials running through. So the first one, the factorial of twice a number is different than the second one, which is two times the factorial of a number. The two, the second one just has an extra factor of two. So look at that first one, the factorial of 2n. If we look at a n, if this shows up in a ratio test, we're going to need a n and a n plus one. So a n plus one, the plus one goes with the n before anything else happens. So we have to take the n plus one and multiply that by two and then do the factorial. So we're going to have a 2n plus 2 factorial. If we start simplifying 2n plus 2 factorial, the first factor is 2n plus 2. The second factor is one less than that, 2n plus 1. And then 2n, 2n minus 1. We still step down by 1. So these are some of the things that show up in factorial with factorials. Mostly because we usually encounter factorials when we start studying the ratio test. Kind of like say, uh, count two, a lot of stuff comes back from your past that you may not have even known about. Factorials are just a, an arithmetic thing. And if you took statistics before this class, then you would have seen some factorials. Calc 2 is also where we learn about some algebra stuff like partial fraction decomposition. That's really kind of an algebra topic, but it's not an algebra topic that's really appropriate for algebra class.
Math class is just, it's just very weird. I always think math class is very weird. And a lot of times I'll compare it to something like what a music class, what, what you get in a music class. And if we taught music, like we taught math, at one point I'd be like, all right, or like typically taught math. It's like, oh, let's learn to play this song. And I can't, I can't even think of a song right now. It's Friday. I haven't had my coffee. Let's learn to play a song, but instead of playing like your own version of the song, you have to play it exactly like it was recorded. It's like, oh, no, 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 that's not the tone that was used on the recording. You have to do it this way. And people are like, oh, but I don't like that. And you're like, well, tough luck. This is a country song. You're going to play it country. And I thought, I've never even heard country music in my life. Why would I? No, just do it. That's kind of like what math feels like sometimes. You know what I mean? Gaming example if you're a dungeon master and you have a certain house rule that another dungeon master doesn't use and you start playing in their game, it feels weird the first time it comes up. And you're like, well, why would you do that? Especially if it's some kind of hot button issue, like flanking giving advantage or something like that. You know what I mean? A lot of times math feels that way. And then after we've tried to cram you into this box of learn it this way or else, then we set you out and say, go be creative. Go create something. I know you've been practicing it to imitate me for the last several years, but go do something new with it. And then when you start struggling with doing something new with it, all the old people are like, oh, man, why don't you just do it the old way? And you're like, oh, because maybe progress is something we should go for? I don't know. You know what I mean? I think what's frustrating is I came to this, came to this realization too late in my career to really think about how I could change, make things better, so. All right, there is some factorials. That's a ratio test. That'll help you with the ratio test. Get working on simplifying things, but more importantly, get working on reading factorials, dominating exponentials, dominating your polynomials, and then start comparing numerator and denominator. See what's gonna work. All right, that's it for today. That's it for this week. I'll see y'all on Monday. Everybody have a good weekend and thanks for playing.